So I've got a Nikon Elements installed here, and I'm running a um, time lapse. We're doing 100 frames. The interval is no delay, and the uh, duration is forever, as soon as we do 100 loops. For the channels, I have two channels here. And for the wavelengths, I'm using a um, Sola driver. And so these wavelengths are spectra drivers. So these wavelengths are just wavelength one, wavelength two. You can see that these switch pretty easily. Now my camera is set up for very fast rates. I've got uh, one frame, effectively no exposure time, or as short as you can get it, and binning 4x4. Four four. Now if I hit a live window, I'll get the live window at some point here, and I'll get about 100 frames a second. Now that 100 frames a second is free run mode, and it's like I'm not getting 100 frames a second. Oh, there it is. That's a free run mode, so you can see here, frames per second is 101, and I'm looking at 9.8 milliseconds of lag. Now, what I've done is created a um, device which can record my actual delay frame to frame, and if I stop this, what we'll see is, here I'm seeing 11, so C is for camera, and this is 11, showing 11 milliseconds exposure to exposure, but if I watch that, it'll cycle uh, back and forth between roughly you know, 9 to 11. So 9.8 mil, uh, milliseconds is about right. Now, at that rate, I should be running a image-to-image -image rate with no, if there's no overhead, of roughly uh, 10 milliseconds per frame. So I should see any switches that take place should take place at 10 milliseconds in a perfect world. Here what I've got is a measurement called channel delay, and here is a measurement called shutter delay. So the way these work is every time a channel command is issued to set up the brightness of a wavelength, then this number is going to get updated. So for instance, if I'm on channel 1 and I go to channel 2, this number will get switched. Same thing down here. If I'm on channel 1 and I switch to channel 2, this number will get updated. So now we're going to run an, a time-lapse uh, ND acquisition and we're going to see how much overhead we have on the system. So I'm going to hit run now and what we're going to see is sixty four milliseconds the shutter delay is um, changing due to the fact that sometimes the shutter is just opening and closing but what we end up getting is a channel delay of fifty nine milliseconds so that's channel to channel we're seeing roughly sixty milliseconds on our camera here we're seeing 54 milliseconds. These two numbers, uh, 59 and then 54, uh, really, this is probably the better case in that the camera is being exposed for less time uh, than the shutter is on. You would never want the shutter to come on after the camera starts exposing, but that does mean that there's a little bit of overhead there. And this seems to be pretty consistent that there's a, the wavelengths are on about um, five to ten uh, milliseconds longer than they need to be in elements. So this is uh, NIS Elements, um, I believe it's 4.22, running on an Andor Zyla camera. Uh, and next we're going to test other software applications to see how much delay they produce.